are live. Alright, can you unmute us? Nothing is going on for me. Nothing live, but... Oh. That one, that's right. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Okay, good new afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Sam Vandy Vandewater calling this December 8th Archaeological Commission meeting to order at 2.04 p.m. Uh, we will... Oh. Where's my agenda? Where'd it go? There it went. Okay. Uh, so we'll first go with roll call. So planning and building services is present. Museum representative... Me museum representative. Did she hear us? Our vocals. Um, well, we can see her on the screen, but she's not hearing us. So let me move on and see. So, um, archaeologist representative is absent without notice. Native American representative. I'm here. Okay. Present. Thank you. And then, uh, Commissioner Fader Sanson, can you hear us? And we can't hear you either. Hmm. Oh, I think I hear noises now. Do you want to IM her? Uh, Commissioner Fader Sampson, can you hear us? Is, yeah. Is, oh, you can hear us? I think there's a little message. I have some Okay, cool. Um, so, moving on to the agenda, we have Archaeological Commission Administration. The applications listed below will be reviewed by the Archaeological Commission. You are invited to view the meeting on YouTube and provide any information pertinent to these applications. If you have photographs of the site, you are encouraged to email them to the above address by 2 p.m. today. Are there any items not on the agenda that have been submitted? No. Okay. So moving down the agenda, uh, we'll start with uh, case... 3C. Um, actually, let's start with case 3B because the planner has requested uh, a continuation to a date uncertain. Um, so I'm just going to make a motion real quick that we continue case CDP underscore 2021-0030 to a date uncertain. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm not sure if... Did she hear us or not? I don't know. I wonder if it's delayed. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Can you message her on? I'm sending an email. Oh, okay. All right, so that has been continued. Um, so case 3A, a survey has been provided, so we'll do that with the other ones. Um, so the other item under survey required is case 3B, which is CDP underscore 2021-0032. The owner is Victoria and Troy DeWolf. Applicant agent is Michael Baron Weick. The request is a standard coastal development permit to construct a new roughly 3,000 square foot two-story single-family residence and detached 567 square foot guest cottage over a 672 square foot two-car garage. This includes the installation of three bedroom with a standard sept a three bedroom standard septic tank perform grading, install new driveway and encroachment, and remove dying bishop pine trees. And this is located roughly eight miles northwest of Wallala with an address of 30100 South Highway 1, Wallala, APN 142-031-07. Do we have anyone in attendance for this item? Let's see what I have. Hello. Hi. Uh, just for the record, uh, our alternate representative um, is now present. Been driving around the building three times to find a parking place. Yep. Let's see. I'm going before the board of supervisors and requesting my own parking place. I don't know, this person has their hand raised, but I'm not sure. Michael Barron? Uh, he's, for another one? he's the agent. Oh, he is? Yeah. Okay. Is Bill here? Bill, uh, no. There we go. Okay. Did you let him talk? Hello? Hi, Michael. So, um, so would, is there any comments you have before we uh, begin our review? No, I'm just here to answer any questions about the site <clears throat> regarding, uh, um, you know, potential uh, archaeological use. Uh, I've done a lot of projects along the Ocean Bluff since uh, uh, Coastal Act was passed, and uh, which has now been, you know, 35, 40 years. And I think over all the homes I've done along the bluffs, uh, there was one where uh, I have had archaeological reports done, but there was only one that had any significant uh, development, which was down by Haven's Neck, where they had some I think clam shell or, or abalone shell mounds. And um, normally that's when there's a direct trail or some indication historically, like Haven's Nick had, where the Pomos uh, would go out, you know, to the to the point out there as a, I think it was a sacred gathering place. But Iverson here, um, this is a ocean bluff piece that has no direct access to the cove below. It looks at Island Cove, and there's a trail, as as um, most people know, that have access from the subdivision there uh, that's further to the south that may or may not have existed, you know, when the Pomos were using uh, the, the beaches uh, at that time period. So uh, basically, it, it's a rare... James, do we not have a quorum? Can you not hear us, Commissioner Fader Sampson? We can't hear you. Oh. How about now? We can hear you. Can you hear us? Okay. So do I do I continue or yeah, What's sorry start? about that. We have a commissioner is having some technical difficulties. Okay, I'll wait. Let's see if she joins on in a second. Oh. 
can you hear us now? Can you hear me now? Yes, can you hear us? No, yes, yeah. We can. I can't hear you. Oh. <laughs> um, is your volume down? Do you need to turn up your volume? <laughs> can you message her on this thing? No. You no, can't no, do no. messages like that? Does she have a speakerphone that she can tune into audio? I'm not do sure. Zoom? Don't we have a Zoom call in number? Yeah, we do. Could we send her that number and have her call in on her cell phone? She can try calling in on that number. Okay, try to say something. I think I can hear you now. How about that? Yeah. Okay, cool. So we do we do have quorum. We have Commissioner Scott and Commissioner Lockhart as well. Okay. So we do have quorum. And um <laughs> we were having the difficulty. So for item three B, we just um the applicant needed to continue the project so we just continued that um and right now we're on 3c because a survey was submitted for 3a okay thank you yeah uh and um the agent for 3c um is providing us some um background information to the project site so if michael if you would like to continue i think we're all good okay uh, <clears throat> i probably won't start over but uh, basically the the current site which um overlooks island cove <clears throat> uh, right by iverson and highway one um, has no direct access to the beach um, where most of the activity for uh, indian uh, uh, use of of sea life uh, was practiced in the past um, i've done projects all the way up and down the coast over the last 45 years and or 40 years and uh, the only one that really came up over all of those projects it's over 50 60 was uh haven's neck and that that clearly was used by the indians over many many uh, seasons uh, but here there's no direct access to the beach to get you know abalone or or, or fish but uh, there is a further to the south uh, there is a trail that goes down to the cove um, so that's that's why I, I don't think this particular um, you know report would be needed but of course you know there may be precedents for the neighboring parcels that uh, had uh, cdps prior to this one but i'm not aware of uh, of any history of uh, archaeological findings in this immediate area <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to the commissioners, and um, I believe we have Michael here for any questions. Um, is there any discussion amongst the commissioners? I just appreciate his perspective and uh, his uh, in reviewing the environment and. Um, thinking in terms of what might have been happening in those days. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Or noted for the record. Uh, Commissioner Scott or Sampson, any com Sorry, Commissioner Fader Sampson or Scott, any comments? Um, I have some comments. Uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm leaning towards survey. Um, there's some, looks like some seasonal drainage water certain times of the year um fresh water so besides the beach we didn't always use the beach actually we used the rocks and uh to collect stuff so um i'm tending probably to recommend a survey to be done to be safe it's too um the area is too uh um it has too much high potential for me well, was, to let this one uh, just be a discovery. 
And I was going to note that from SSU, there appears to be um, a site on the property, P2300167. And then they state that, yeah, there's a high likelihood of unrecorded resources. So I'm, I'm also more supportive of that as well. If anyone wants to make a motion. I'll go ahead and make a motion. Um, I'll make a motion to require a survey uh, for CDP underscore 2021-0032. So I have a motion to require a survey for case CDP 2021-0032. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by both Commander, Commissioner Fader Samson and Lockhart, so we'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Planning and Building Services is an aye. Museum representative? Aye. Um, Native American representative? Aye. And alternate representative? Aye. Motion carries uh, four to zero. A survey shall be required. And then, Michael, um, your planner should hopefully be reaching out to you shortly with the follow up. Okay. I'll wait to hear from Matt then. Okay. Okay, um, and let's go. So then moving on the agenda, um, does everyone have the survey for 3A that was provided? Did you mail those I mailed, out? Mailed one to Lila. Did, did you get that? That's the one late in the mail. Yes. Yeah. I also emailed it to you. It should be in Alta. 33, yep, yeah. that's it. Cool. Yep. So we'll move on to the agenda to case 3A, which is CDP 2021-0033. The owner applicant is Black Diamond Holdings, LLC. The agent is SN Architects. The request is a standard coastal development permit to construct a single family residence, garage, and accessory structures. This is located north of the city of Fort Bragg on the west side of Highway 1, located at 25600 Ward Avenue, APN 069-141-44. Do we have anyone um, in attendance for this project? De Gioria, is that? De Georgie? De Georgia, is that him? Um, yeah, let him speak for a second. Let's see okay. if, if what item he would like to <coughs> speak to. Hi, Alex. Hi, everyone. Um, are you commenting on just any project that you have a survey for, or were you here for a specific project? I'm here for uh, pro case 3A. Okay. The, so the, the report that you're reviewing now. Okay, cool. Um, I'm, I'm just here to answer any questions. Thanks. Okay, thank you. So then with that, I'll open it up to the commission. Alex, how are you? I'm great, Allison. Happy holidays. How are you? Thank you. Uh, you as well. Uh, I'm good. Um, so it's been a while since you did this survey. Is that what I said? Uh, two and a half years ago. Yeah. I don't know why this was slow to develop, but here we are. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> you don't have any reason. I mean, other than it being slow. No hiccups yeah. on your part or anything. Sorry? No hiccups on your part or anything. I mean, it's just. No, no, I think, you know, them deciding to push forward with it, they're 
did the survey perhaps as part of the constraints analysis initially that you know with the attempt of building and then got over that hurdle and, uh, and and then who knows maybe it was a funding thing or timing was wrong right. there, okay. uh, project management so, so where is web from here so you didn't see any you you don't know where this site the closest site sorry i just got this your report today so the closest site let's see um we'll open my report up so uh in 2003 i surveyed uh, all of the character state park and all of the resources that are uh within the search radius are were part of that survey so okay. uh, it looks like there's five resources within half mile radius there are uh, four of them are prehistoric and one is historic the historic one's the hall road and the other four are uh, shell refuse uh, scatters. Uh, and, and again, those uh, are all within McCarricker. Yes. Uh, okay. The one that is uh, Mendocino 1842 is yes. located at immediately northeast of the project area on uh, the state park property. Uh, okay. That site uh, was a diffuse shell min within it and around a sand dune. Burials and projector points have been noted, although none observed on site. Uh, that's, that one uh, seems familiar. Yeah. Uh, I didn't provide you with the site record or any of that stuff in the attachment, just simply because I want to make sure it doesn't get out there. To the right. Here. Uh, no, I just yeah. wanted to. Yeah. I think it's on the other side of the hall road. Okay. Nice. Well, thank you, Alex. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions or comments by Commissioner Spader Sampson or Lockhart? Uh, it looks like nothing was found, and so it's recommended that the project proceed. Do you have any comments? All right. Well, then, do we have anyone who wants to make a motion or any further discussion? I'll make the motion. OK. I'll make the motion that we accept the survey conducted for CDP underscore 2017-0033. So I have a motion by Commissioner Scott to accept the survey for case CDP 2017-0033. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Fader Sampson. We'll take a roll call vote. Planning and Building Services is an aye. Museum representative? Aye. A Native American representative? Aye. Alternate representative? Yeah. Uh, motion carries four to zero. The survey is accepted. Thank, Thank you, everyone, for your help. Appreciate it. Happy Thank holidays. you, Alex. Take care. Bye. Have a good holiday. You too. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Click on the Okay, so moving down the agenda, we'll go to review of survey, which we have five items, I believe. One, two, three, four, five. So we will start with case 4A, which is U2017-0015. The owner is Leonard Swithenbank, applicant is Travis Swithenbank, and the agent is Jim Ronco. The request is a coastal development use permit to authorize the construction and operation of a 400 unit mini storage site with 11 buildings and a 1400 square foot two story office, as well as 40 spaces of portable storage area. This is located roughly one mile, two miles south of Fort Bragg 
on the east side of Highway 1 with an address of 18631 North Highway 1, Fort Bragg, APN 017-140-16. Do we have anyone in attendance for this project? Not that I can see on the screen. Okay. With no one in raising their hand. Okay. So no one is in attendance, so the discussion is open to the commissioners. And I'll just start that I had no comments on this particular project. Are you in attendance for this, technically? Okay, so I'm putting on. I'm actually good with this one, so that's about my comment. <laughs> hmm. Any comments? Any comments? Looking like no comments. Um, so then, is there any motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. To, Thank you. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Uh, to accept the survey for U underscore 2017 dash 0015. So I have a motion to accept the survey by Commissioner Scott. Or sorry, I have a motion to commit to approve the survey for U 2017 dash 0015 by Commissioner Scott. Do I have a second? A second. And I have a second by Commissioner Lockhart. We'll take a roll call vote. Planning and Building Services is an aye. Uh, museum representative? Aye. Native American representative? Aye. And alternate representative? Yeah. Motion carries four to zero. The survey is accepted. Four to zero. Okay. So moving on down the agenda, we have minor, uh, case 4B, which is MS 2020-0006. The owner is Jeff, Jack Rafter. The applicant is Vance Ricks, agent Jim Ronco. The request is a minor subdivision of one legal six-acre parcel comprised of APNs 167-190-08 and 167-230-03, creating two separate legal parcels of 2.1 acres and 3.9 acres. This is located roughly a mile and a half north of Ukiah on the east side of North State Street with an address of 4681 North State Street and 46612 North State Street, Ukiah. APNs have already been stated. <coughs> um, do we have anyone in attendance for this project? No, we do not. So the discussion is open to the commissioners. Hey, Vandy. Yes. I'm actually driving, so I'm going to do, um, suspend or 
Can I not be part of the meeting for a minute? Yes. <laughs> okay. That'd be great. Thank you. I can't okay. do two, two, three things at once, but I tried. I'm trying. I'll say my comments are that I mean I would prefer more detail in the field methods description but I don't have issue with the survey given that there's so few records of of resources adjacent to the site that entire area of the Berry culture was sensitive but it's um, been so muddled over the years who knows but I agree with your comments. Okay. And then I don't know if Commissioner Fader Sampson has any comments. I have no issue. Okay. Um, let me just see what the recommendations were. So, like, discovery clause. Um, so I'll just make a motion to accept the survey for MS 2020-0006. With discovery clause. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by <laughs> Commissioners Lockhart and Peter Sampson. So we'll take a roll call vote. Um, and just for the record, uh, Commissioner Scott is still predisposed at the moment and will not be voting on this case. So there'll be three votes. So building blank. Yeah. Planning and Building Services is an aye. Uh, museum representative? Aye. And alternate representative? Yes. Uh, motion carries three to zero. Survey is accepted with the discovery clause. No one in attendance. Okay. All right. Moving on, we have case 4C. This is CDP 2021-0016. The owner is Camp Bedhead, LLC. The applicant is Lavi Daniels, and the agent is Wynn Coastal Planning and Biology. Now hold on, everyone. It's a long request. So the request is to convert an existing roughly 900-square-foot garage to a roughly 1,900 square foot single family residence. The single family residence will be constructed on both an existing berm and upon a upon steel columns, with the majority being raised above ground. Convert an existing roughly 700 square foot single family residence to a 640 square foot guest cottage by removing 57 square feet. Both conversions include interior remodeling. Additionally, there is the construction of a 775 square foot studio attached to the single family residence. Average height is 18 feet. Total square footage of development is 2,203 square feet. The request also includes installation of a septic tank, propane tank, trenching for utilities, below ground water storage tank, a reconfiguration of the existing driveway, and installation of symbolic fencing along the bluff edge. The project also includes converting an existing test well on the north part of the parcel to a production well, convert an existing shallow irrigation well to a production well, and or drill a new production well in the south part of the parcel. The request also includes installation of a primary septic system uh, as well as a probable future repair and replacement septic field. 
And lastly, the project also includes a boundary line adjustment to merge the three parcels, the three APNs, into one legal parcel. This is located one mile north of Mendocino on the west side of State Route 1 with an address of 11800 Road 500D and 9401 North Highway 1, APNs 118-320-10, uh, 119-320-11, and 118-320-12. Thank you. That was a bit. So I believe um, we have... Amy Wynn on the line representing the project. Do we have anyone else? That's it. All right, so I'll turn it over to Amy if you have any comments to make um, prior to our review. Thank you, Mandy. Uh, yeah. Hello, commissioners. Thank you so much for reviewing our survey. It's good to see you again. And uh, I'm available for, for questions if you may have them. Uh, and we look forward to your review. The date I see on the surveys from 2001, does that mean nothing has been done since then? Correct. No development has been pursued since 2001. The survey was prepared for a, um, a boundary line adjustment and um, pro development proposal back in the early and mid 2000s that did not um, did not take place. And the proposal that uh, is before you now is for a much smaller project than previously. Mandy, are there other homes in this area? Um. Maybe. I'm sorry, if you were asking me, I didn't I didn't hear what Commissioner Lockhart said. Oh, she was just inquiring about how just how many other homes are on road 500 D. Yeah, that is a pretty short road. I believe there are, let's see, there's maybe three or four to the south of the property and none to the north. So in the north of the property, it's state parks. Okay. If that helps. Yes, yeah, so if you look at that one, all the black dots south of the property are houses. It doesn't look like anything's on the north side. I'd give it to this area. Okay, so the north side's rough and gold. I correct myself, three homes to the south. Not four. And the, the proposed development as as Vandy read in the description is in the area of pre-existing structures that um that the previous you know that were developed uh i don't know a while back um jacques can't remember the fellow's name he was an avian biologist and that's why there's an uh, an aviary on the property and some some sort of some funky old buildings, so we're are, we're proposing to uh, reuse those buildings and um, add on to them to have some modern, some contemporary development out there.
Just for the record, do we have Commissioner Scott back? I'm seeing no comment, so we'll assume no Commissioner Scott for this item. Are there any comments by Commissioners Lockhart or Fader Sampson? Well, I'd like to comment, though, in the fact that there's a lot of soil being moved. Yeah. And this seems very lightweight. I would be supportive of, like, having someone there on site. Absolutely, because um, even even though the in the town of Mendocino, my own personal knowledge, the majority would be to the east, I believe. Not necessarily a very site to the west for the ocean. Even though they'd be walking down to harvest, but because of the terrain, I believe the original village sites are more to the east, were they not? By the way, you owe me that map. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it looks like, yeah. Let me just hear it. For, for this, I know that paper's going to make some noise, but this is Amy again. For this property, I don't know if it helps or not, but it's a, it's an ex, it's a pretty near, Ver, um, I don't know, for my, I don't like getting too close to bluff edge, edges, so for me, like, this is a bluff edge that I really stay clear of. Um, it's it's extremely steep, uh, and so there's, there's a, at least you won't see Amy going down the edge of that. I don't, I don't know that <laughs> there are other um, non-rope climbing humans that would go down there, but I, you know, uh, I do know that the, that um, the NCRM survey uh, covered the entire property uh, before and did talk, did discuss that in the area of the existing structures that it was, um, what did he call it, heavily, let's see, heavily landscaped and disturbed. Uh, that was the other thing. Um, gosh, what was the, oh, my biologist will kill me for not remembering the previous Jacques Helfer, Jacques Helfer, he was an avian biologist as well as a horticulturalist. And so he, he would, um, had a lot of plantings. They're part of the property. It has a lot of very peculiar plantings all around it. And that's because of Jacques Helfer's history. Um, so anyways, just, I, I don't know if that helps. I definitely and absolutely understand, um, that, you know, that this area, you know, between Westport and and I think Elk probably have a lot of, you know, there's a lot of um, use over the millennia in this region. But I, I believe that this survey was pretty thorough, uh, covering the entire property with sho shovel scrapes, um, looking for, you know, middens as well as other evidence. Um, and again, that previous proposal from the early and mid 2000s was for uh, building two homes on the property. Uh, so it was more more extensive, if, if that helps, but I, you know, certainly defer to your judgment. And I think we would probably, we would certainly be fine with a monitor on site during ground disturbance at that. Okay, well, thank you. Well, oh. oh, Commissioner Scott? Hi, I'm back. Sorry. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, so okay. we're on case 4C, um, and I was kind of leaning towards approving the survey but requiring a monitor on site for ground disturbance, and um, the agent just indicated that they would be open to that as well. Okay. Um, well, actually, in the past, this is the Max Mary prepared report, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. In the past, um, I don't think Max Neary is actually a registered archaeologist that we've discovered. And um, in the past, like, you know, when, when his other surveys have come up, we've actually had to redo them. What? 
even though his byline says he's a consulting archaeologist. Maybe he's not a registered. He's, he's probably not on our list. I mean, this is, it's come up before. Uh -huh. Um, we can unless check, something's right? changed. I mean, as far as what we can, well, let's check. Uh, Chris, so if you go to chrisinfo.org, oh, okay, it will have all the registered archaeologists for the state. And would yeah. that include, would that include who was registered? Like, I mean, he might not be registered now, but if he was registered when he wrote the report, would that include that? Um, I'm not if he was sure. registered during this, I'm not sure how it, it lists, how it works. Um, actually, Bill would know more about being a registered archaeologist because he is. But uh, Max never had a consulting, um, you know, somebody to sign off of it. Even if he is an archaeologist, you would need somebody who is actually registered to sign the report. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's news to me. I didn't. I didn't know yeah. that that was a question for this particular relative to this particular archaeologist. I... Yeah, right. Right. And he too. did. He did a lot of work. Yeah. In our area. And the only the only reason that this becomes an issue is that the code does require the survey be either conducted by a registered archaeologist or yeah, approved by one. So we just want to check on that. And the report's twenty years old. Is the website anwaxonoma.edu? Chrisinfo.org. Does does it matter if a I, I'm understand I'm, co I'm completely being educated here. Um, does it matter if if a report yes. is Chrisinfo.org? Yeah, our reports need to be done by a registered professional archaeologist. Now the report can be written by their staff archaeologist who doesn't have to be registered, but the main person. Yeah. needs to be registered their main consulting yeah. archaeologist needs to be okay and then commissioner scott pardon me but you also um mentioned the date yeah. of the report the that, that should be, no, be the same issue. yeah we 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 don't have a de definitive cutoff date but anything that's over like 10 to 15 years old we tend to have them being redone because you know the environment changes even in that short amount of time but it, if and again i apologize these are completely naive questions but if we're looking at i mean i i, I understand geology and art and um biology uh being done and, and hydrology and stuff like that but arch archaeology isn't that i mean if there was not anything 20 years ago wouldn't I mean, if something that would show up between now and 20 years ago, wouldn't that be like modern, not archaeology? No, no. Uh, there's things that pop up, say, through, you know, rainfall. Something might come to the surface or uh, erosion, um, animal disturbance, different things like that. And then technique and, uh, you know, the techniques of the archaeologist. They do change. So it's like what, what's, what's under the surface wouldn't change, but because the it might move to the top of erosion and or ground disturbance things that right. were not discovered previously might be able to be discovered now right um, right and we give a certain amount of time um you know within a certain amount of years that you know things don't happen overnight clearly but <laughs> within 20 years things could happen i okay. mean and this is just my perspective i try to think about it i went to Greece and Athens one time and you know they built the subway system for the 2000 Olympic Games in Athens and during that time the amount of archaeological resources they discovered in building that subway was immense to the point where all the subway stations are now miniature museums for all the resources so I'm also kind of you know things can be buried and appear Right. Um. And I, I hate to bag on a rag on Max, but this doesn't meet our standards. Well, it was it's so it doesn't meet okay, so it doesn't meet modern. The our standard 20, for the, the commission. Yeah, okay. but it might have you know it met the standards in two thousand and one. Okay. okay. I, I, 
right I, right gotcha I must say the survey method doesn't impress me. Okay. With the numerous, numerous shovel scrapes, it's not sufficient. What, 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 what are you? Would it be possible to have another archaeologist review this? Rather, you know, or I don't know where, you, or have the a monitor on site during ground disturbance. What, what are you guys? Where are you guys going? Uh, Sorry. I'm, I'm talking as though it's a conversation. <laughs> I apologize. No, I'm learning. So, Commissioner Van de Water here. I would. I'm still. If we have a you know a registered archaeologist who's monitoring during ground disturbance, I'm still comfortable with that. Oh, okay. Personally, but I'll let the other commissioners provide their feedback. I am as well. That sounds great to me. Commissioner Scott. Definitely have one on site during the process. Yeah. Commissioner Scott. Well, I'm reading what they're doing. Sorry, I, I, I jumped in late on this one. <laughs> oh. It's, yeah. A little lengthy of a project description. Yeah. This the shorthand, I don't know if you can listen while I'm while you're reading, but the shorthand is that there are some existing structures on the property that that the that are going to be um they're going to have some interior remodeling and then there's going to be an addition to one of those structures to make them um you know more more accommodating than previously they're mm -hmm. under block i can't stand going in them they're just kind of creepy <laughs> but i like keep reading Sounds like a novel. Reads like a novel. <laughs> I know. I was driving down. It's almost as long as the report. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm cool with having an archaeologist there too. If you know, monetary wise, I don't know what would be the less expensive route to have a new. Um, report submitted or just having somebody there depending on their work well so how about this i i make a motion that the project move forward with an either or condition that either one a new survey is provided to the commission or two an archaeologist archaeological monitor is present during ground disturbance so it gives a and, little flexibility to okay. the applicant okay and then three, we don't accept the survey that's provided. Sure. Okay. I mean, is that possible? Well, so let me amend it. So I make a motion to not accept the survey given standards and time, but allow the project to move forward with either one, an archae a new archaeological survey being conducted, or two, an archaeological monitor on site. For ground disturbance and for ground disturbance, correct. Right. Um, I can second that. All right. Well, so let's uh, okay. Let's take a vote Was since I, we have a second okay. by Commissioner Fader Sampson. Um, so planning and building services will be an aye. Museum representative. Aye. Native American representative. Aye. And alternate representative. Yes. Yeah. Some motion carries four to zero so um the survey we will not accept due to age and standards but we'll move the project forward and either if you can provide us with a survey or have an archaeological monitor present during ground disturbance perfect thank you i appreciate that and, and thank you for uh thanks for the education now i know <laughs> i appreciate your time. I hope it helped all right bye-bye thank you okay Let's see. So I will just go back and watch. I there's no heat in here. See, in the summer it's too hot, and in the winter it's too cold. <laughs> there's never a happy medium in this room. Could we put that on the agenda for the board of <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
So moving down the agenda, we have case 4D, which is CDP 2021-0020. The owner applicant is Anthony and Alicia Bazzano. Agent is Winfield Klein. The request is a standard CDP to construct a single-family residence with attached garage, a new well, new septic, and a driveway. Minimal grading is proposed, as well as the removal of a single fir tree. This is located 8 miles north of Wallala, located at 4611 Iverson Lane, APN 142-010-13. One three. Do we have anyone in attendance for the project? There's two people in there. I'm not sure who the. I know the last one is for the last case, but the two that I don't know. Um, if Andrea or Bronwyn, if this is um your item, could you please raise your hand so we could allow you to speak? Okay. So we're going to bring Bronwyn then. Weren't we just on Iverson Lane? The last one? No, we were on the road. Oh, road, okay. Okay. Why'd you, so is Jeanette on this one or no, the next she's one? not. I saw her next one. Okay. Okay. There you go. Hi, Bronwyn. So if you um, have any comments to have the commissioners consider, you can speak now. Otherwise, um, um, we'll have you on here for questions, I guess. Who mm -hmm. so a second one raised their hand? Oh, they do. Okay. So is Jeanette on this one? I'll ask her. Oh. I'm here. If you, I am here. Jeanette's here. And this, but, you're you're on here for the Anthony Alicia Bazan. No, project? no, I'm for the PG&E project. Okay. okay, so you're going to be the you're the next item. Um, so we're not hearing from uh, Bronwyn. If you're on a phone, it's star six to unmute. Um, okay, now Andrea is raising her hand. Hi, Andrea. Hi, yes, can you all hear me? Yes. Um, I just wanted to let everyone, all, all the commissioners know that myself and Bronwyn and Jeanette, we are all on for um, the PG&E project, so case oh. 4E. Um, so that's why we're not, just wanted to let you know. <laughs> okay, thank you, that's appreciated, thank you. Okay, so then there's no one in attendance for this item, so I open it to commissioners. So a site was found. I need a one. Sorry? There was a lipid scatter. Oh, is that this one? Am I on the right one? Uh, yes. Well, though, I don't think, did he find it or? I yeah, see, this is a, a, another archaeologist. But this is Alex's report. They found four flakes and they said that the area where they want to do this current work is not near that. So his findings are that it's not going to, it will not cause substantial adverse change to tribal cultural resources, but it could cause substantial changes to historical resources, which is typically like more, I don't say modern architecture, but like more Anglo-American development.
Because I'm not saying where she said that. Are we still on um, 4D? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Winfield Klein, the agent, uh, experienced a power outage. Okay. He's going to be calling in shortly on his cell phone, oh, but he okay. wasn't able to connect with the computer. Okay. Okay. Um, so, would the commissioners just like to move on to the next case? Well, oh, wait. Oh, there he is. Is that him? Oh, oh my Hi, uh, if this is um, Winfield, Winfield um, you can press star six to unmute if you're on your phone. So again, that's star six to unmute on the phone. Um, I'll call him. Okay. So you want to move on to the next item? Yeah. Okay. Um, so while we have him sort out technical difficulties, um, we'll move on to the next item and come back to this one. Um, so the next item will be case 4E. This is CDP 2021-0027. The owner applicant is Pacific Gas and Electric, and the agent is, I'm going to, is it Odie Burstein? I hope I said that right. Um, the request is a standard coastal development permit to remove major vegetation, approximately 66 trees and other vegetation, and satisfy the fire safe standards within 100 feet of the perimeter fence at the PGE substation in Elk. This is located in the coastal zone in Elk um, on the north side of Philo Greenwood Road with an address of 35730 Philo Greenwood Road and 35900 Elk Meadows Road and 5801 South Highway 1. So APNs are 127-232-12, And I believe we have three attendees, two attendees, for this item, yeah. Um, so Andrea and or Jeanette, if you would like to say anything prior to a review, um, please feel free to comment. Otherwise, um, we might just call on you for questions and clarifications. Okay, great. Thank you very much. This is Andrea. Um, thank you, commissioners, for hearing our item. Um, we are all on the line for any questions. Bronwyn is our PG&E um, cultural resource specialist as well, so she will be able to answer, help answer any uh, specific specific questions you might have regarding the survey um, that was performed. Thank you. Um, so with that I'll turn it to commissioners. And then, sorry, Andrea, for the record, what was Bronwyn's last name? That would be Bronwyn Lloyd. B-O-Y-D. 
So it's L L O Y D. Oh, sorry, Lloyd. I heard Boyd. Lloyd. Thank you. Yep. Okay. I didn't have any comments on this survey. Anything uh, from Commissioner Scott? Oh, we might have lose Commissioner Scott again. Oh. No, I'm here. Okay. Okay, yeah, no, sorry. So no, but I understand nobody's going to be present while these are coming down. So no monitor or anything. It does not appear so now. Did you have any additional comments or recommended motions or? Is that on the, um, on the one maps, the blown up map, that's not a drainage, right? That's just a road. Uh, what page are you on? Oh, sorry. Um, I'm looking at the blown up topo map. It's towards the end of the, actually, it's the last page of the survey. Back it. Okay. I just want to make sure where it says Philo Greenwood Road. That doesn't follow a creek or a drainage, right? No. Am I looking at that correctly? Yeah. Okay. No, I think those are just, I don't know what the, no, they're not. I think it's, if you, I think it's an old road because if you, it's the road layer because um, our cartographer puts an additional road layer on top of these. Oh, uh, so okay, the, okay. The yellow line is not normally there. I think it's just tracing the road on the contour map. Okay. No, I'm good. It's not a very hot, a likely spot for any action. Okay, so then I'll just make a motion to approve the survey for CDP 2021-0027 with the discovery clause. I'll second. All right, we'll do, a, um, that was seconded by Commissioner Scott. We'll take a roll call vote. Uh, planning and building services is an aye. Museum representative? Aye. Um, Native American representative? Yes. Was that a yes? Yes. Okay, sorry. That's Thank a you. Yes. Uh, an alternate representative? Yeah. So the motion carries four to zero. The survey is accepted with the discovery clause as a condition. Cool. So thank you, um, Andrea, Bronwyn, and Jeanette. Um, your planner should reach out to you shortly. Thank you.
And then lastly, we'll go back to CDP 2021-0020, which is case 4D. And I believe we now have Winfield on the line. Um, so Winfield, if you want to unmute, and if you have any comments. Sure. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Sorry, uh, our power went out, uh, and it just came on just in the nick of time. Um, uh, so um, I want to, I guess, start by explaining why there wasn't a map uh, of the, uh, of the, ooh, I don't know the proper terminology here, but uh, the resources um, that were found. And basically, uh, in speaking with Alta, um, who perform, performed the, the survey, um, they found three shards and they believed them to be subsurface. And because of the fact that uh, those were all that were found, um, they didn't feel uh, that it was proper to, you know, uh, and it was from a disturbed area that that was this uh the well that was dug um and so from three shards there was no way for them to draw up uh, a map that that would have any significance um so so i spoke to them and and their uh, uh one path that they proposed was for them to uh to write up a report and proposal and send it to uh, the Archaeological Commission uh, to, uh, in kind of preparation for them doing some, some excavation in the area to find out what may be there. And, and the way they uh, proposed it was that they could do that in the same area that we would be uh, placing our foundation. So they would kind of find out exactly what what was in the area that we're proposing. And I suppose stop if they hit anything that was of critical importance or, you know, kind of higher level significance and document everything. Um, so so that's one option and that uh, for their services, we would run about ten thousand um, dollars. The the kind of unfortunate thing for us is that it kind of means doing things out of sequence in in kind of designing the building without having a uh, an approval in place. And so then there's that potential that we spend, you know, the structural engineering and, you know, the $10,000 for them to do the digging. And I don't know if something, but we still have no kind of planning approval. We have no building approval at that point. And so there's a risk to the, the owner. Um, the other option, which ends up being kind of a similar thing, but in a different order, uh, is one that we're proposing to you, which would be a monitoring uh, a situation where we would we would get a, like planning approval to do this uh, and have an archaeologist on site to monitor a standard contractor, and so that would that would allow us to get planning approval first, and then building department approval, and then do the digging, which would be the same digging that Alta would, was proposing we do, uh, except the digging would be performed by uh, the contractor and the oversight would be an archeologist, which I guess is pretty similar still because I, I don't think Alex is gonna be doing the digging. Uh, he's probably just gonna monitor somebody else. So uh, it's just a, a little bit, uh, you know, and maybe the cost isn't that different. Uh, the other issue with doing it kind of in that funny funny way where we dig uh the foundations first before we have uh approvals is that we don't know how long uh the time is going to be between the digging and the actual approvals and construction so rain you know 
uh, if there's like rain events that happen in between those times, say it takes a while to get through building department approval and planning approval, then it could, you know, potentially uh, affect those uh, uh, excavations in a negative way. And then we'd have to re-excavate uh, if there was such a rain event. So, so we're um, asking the commission if, if they would be open to a monitoring approach to it, which would, uh, you know, allow us to get planning approval with monitoring uh, and then, uh, then get building approval, then do our digging, which would happen just right before we do the, you know, we do construction. So that's, that's our request. Okay, thank you. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, any comments by commissioners? I agree. You agree. Mm -hmm. Using a monitor, I, I have no such a a pretty standard approach, so. I'm on board with that. Okay. Well then, in, um, let me see. Uh, so then, I make a motion that we accept the survey for KCDP 2021-0020 with an additional condition that an archaeological monitor be present during ground disturbing activities. Do I have a second? second. That? Okay. I'll second. Thank you. Seconded by Commissioner Scott. Um, we'll take a roll call vote. So, Planning and Building Services is a aye. Museum representative? Aye. Um, Native American representative? Aye. And alternate representative? Yeah. Motion carries four to zero. Um, so, we will, yeah, you're recommended um, proposal Winfield is approved. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. And thanks for uh, holding the, um, holding uh, my place uh, while I, I dealt with my issues. Yeah, no problem. You have a good rest okay. of your day and a good holiday. Okay. Thanks. You too. Bye. Thanks. Okay. Um, we do have, let's see. So that was real quick. Okay. So moving down the agenda, uh, any matters from staff? Did you not? I was going to do that for matters from commission. Okay. Nope. Nothing from okay. staff. Okay. Um, I do have one item for matters from commission, and it's just renewing that um, resolution where we find that the state or local officials continue to recommend me measures to promote social distancing in connection with public meetings. Did I read this until the record last time? Yes, you did. Okay. You didn't read the whole thing. Oh, what I read? It's the top. Okay, so what I just read? Yes. Okay. So pretty much this is just finding that teleconferencing and doing Zoom meetings is still appropriate um, and recommended by our health services people. Health officer. Health officer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so unless any commissioner would like me to reread this, I'm just going to make a motion that we accept. Is there a resolution number to this? No, it's not. Um, I make a motion that we accept the guidance to continue measures to promote social distancing in connection with public meetings. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, second by Commissioner Fader Sampson. Roll call vote. Uh, planning and Building Services, aye. Um, museum representative? Aye. Native American representative? Aye. And alternate representative? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, the motion carries three to one. There you go. Thank you. Any other matter? Um, I do. I know that um, last time we discussed changing or just improving our 
a procedures document for the public to include clarification on minimal, mineral soil observation. Um, but I would assume that we kind of want Commissioner Call here as well. So mm -hmm. I'll just table that for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any other matters from the commission? None for me. No. Okay. More heat through the winter. What? More heat? More heat. I'm freezing. <laughs> we can get a space heater. <laughs> um, so then matters from the public? No, nothing. Nothing? Okay. With that, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Okay. We are adjourned at 3.24 p.m. Thank you, everyone. And... I hope you all have a lovely holiday. And Oh, wait, Commissioner Fader Sampson? No, no, I was just saying happy holidays. Adios. Oh. Yeah, happy holidays, happy new year, and we will see you all on January 5th. January 5th. In the new year. Woo! <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Allison. Bye. So, Bye, Manny. We can start celebrating now, right?